Alright, Health of Day video. Yeah. On value again. Um, I'm about a quarter way through this video. It's a very long video. But I think I have enough of a stumbling point to, that, you know, we might as well say, look, you got to resolve this so there's no further conversation, really. Um, because we're not going to be speaking the same language or understanding the game we're playing or any of that stuff. So let's first understand this word philosophy, understand what our brain is, okay? Our brain, its origin is a scheming tool, merely we possess it because it made things easy for this organism to do things in the world as a selfish organism. Clearly, with the development of language, we have been able to know a little bit more about the game we're playing and realize that there's other pieces in the game. The other pieces have intrinsic or fundamental meaning or substance based on the fact that they do experience. And so I'll go into that a little deeper. But um, clearly our brain can understand, can see from different points of view using its imagination. And so now it can scheme the truth. Okay, It can use logic to understand the model, to understand the systems, like the weather, or what automobiles will do, or what buses do, and what planes do, and we can anticipate and understand. And part of that understanding is this simple understanding that, okay, here I am, a sentient organism. Um, what do I see as meaningful about my existence? Well, obviously, in my opinion, it's the experiences I have, the sensations I go through, and that what makes something good is the quality of those sensations or what makes something bad is the negative quality of those sensations that are associated with that activity or that event. Um, and that that's the thing that's of value. So to really understand what I'm talking about is you have to sort of just say, well look, it doesn't matter who's making this stuff, the stuff is released. Every time you have an experience it's just kind of released into a a field where it's calculated. So let's just call it a golden egg or something. And your comfort is a golden egg. And so every time you're comfortable, a little golden egg flies into the ether. Um, or you can do it from a negative utilitarian position where you'd say something toxic is created. And yeah, you're filling up the buckets full of dioxin or something. Um, and then there's just a simple calculation. Um, so the, the simple point is, is that we're making this stuff as we exist. This value component is created through our experiences. And uh, every sentient organism, when it has an experience, value is cha-ching, 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 happens. It's either a negative or a positive in the, the balance sheet. It's either a liability or, a, or an asset. Um, and um, then you just do the math. So who's experiencing it? logically just doesn't make any difference. It's, uh, it's only valuable in terms of you know, creating greater efficiencies in the production of this stuff. So if yes, if you, can, if you can give the comfort to an organism that's going to create more comfort in the world by being comfortable, well then that would be a good thing. And if you can make somebody uncomfortable and then they'll create more discomfort in the world, well that might be a good thing also. Um, so yes, it maximizes the efficiency with which we lay these golden eggs is the idea. So that's the, only, that's the only way it matters, but it doesn't matter in terms of its production. An egg is an egg is an egg is an egg. Okay, the golden eggs, there aren't better golden eggs laid by some things and less golden eggs laid by other things. It's just they're all golden eggs. Um, and it's all about this sentient experience thing. Torture is torture. It doesn't matter who you're torturing. A headache is a headache. It doesn't matter who's experiencing it. I mean, it's, it just doesn't matter. It's the negative experience itself that matters. And that, I think, is just a logical statement. Just as you acknowledge a pawn is a pawn is a pawn is a pawn is a pawn on a checkerboard, a chessboard, you're not going to sit there and try to figure out, well, this pawn belongs in the front. No, they're all pawns. We're all experience creation machines um, based on our sentience and if you wish to degrade some sentience or the capacity of them to create whole eggs well I'll say it's okay with me I don't think there's any point in doing that but if you want to say animals only create half eggs or whatever well that's your prerogative I don't think you have any evidence to justify it but that's your prerogative to say they, they hatch they, they, they lay no value eggs I think it's just idiotic and insane um, their, their emotional sentience and their physical sentience is a, a, an, an, <laughs> an undeniable biological fact 
and uh, to argue that they have no value, their experience does not mean anything compared to our experience, it's just idiotic. Uh, it's ludicrous as a premise, as an argument, as a statement. As a statement, it is ludicrous and unfounded by any fact whatsoever. Um, so you really just have to understand that. Uh, the, 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 to go back to the beginning, um, the only argument I make is, is whatever value we're going to find is in this jar called Earth. The whole point of me arguing that life is futile or there's nothing in the universe that creates a purpose for us, there's no fire for us to put out, there's no disease for us to cure, the universe doesn't have some disease and we're the penicillin for that disease, uh, we don't correct a broken. Um, and that argument is just being made to, to point out that all the value is in this jar, this jar of the sentient life on this planet. As far as we know, there's no other function for this stuff. And there's no other value. It's not going to derive value from the external universe. Uh, derive eggs production. <laughs> it's not going to be able to enhance its egg production uh, through that. So anyway, there's two categories. Um, you know, good, good, feeling good and feeling bad. I might argue that there's one, you know, two categories. Uh, feeling bad and feeling less bad um, and um, the rest of it's just logic you just want to have less of the bad less bad is good and more good is good I mean that's the simple logic here so you just have the two categories not good feelings feelings to be discouraged feelings to be eliminated and good feelings you know the golden eggs whatever um, make more of the comfort thing um, and it just doesn't matter who is experiencing it, it just really matters that it's this experience, that the raw numbers are, will, will define our efficiency as a species. Um, and it really just matters, the gross production, the net production is all that really matters. It just doesn't matter, this individualism stuff just doesn't have any place in these equations beyond, again, the fact that um, you can use certain manipulations to create more eggs um, or less eggs um, by feeding certain chickens more or feeding chickens less uh, gooses um, but it has nothing to do with the actual value of the eggs um, let's see it is logical to recognize that a person is a person a feeling is a feeling and who is experiencing the feeling it just doesn't matter a broken leg is a broken leg is a broken leg is a broken leg Yes, if you can give the broken leg to the person who deserves it, great, but it just doesn't matter uh, unless it's going to change the balance of how many broken legs there are in the universe. If you're still going to have the same number of broken legs, no matter who you give it to, then it just doesn't matter. Alright, so I think I've said my piece, and I'll explain why. Um, and I'll put in the context of his video at about this point. Pause, play, pause, play. Come on, baby, play. Come on. Categories uh, in different um, points of view as and how and when we need, uh, when they suit. Um, you're trying to impose on us this category of sentience, but not, but more than that, that also attached in that definition of the category of sentience, also the category of value and the category of art, mm. all in an all income. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, like like I said, it's just kind of simple, right? Sentience creates value by creating experience. Experiences have value; they have decidedly negative, decidedly positive value most of the time. There's some that are ambiguous, but whatever. Most experiences fit into one of those two categories of positive or negative. And the idea is to minimize the number of negative and maximize the number of positive. And there is. Uh, there has to be some understanding that the value weight of the negative is usually heavier than the value weight of the positive. The positive is usually the correction for a, a negative or the threat of a negative. 
So relief from poverty feels good. Relief from a threat feels good. Fear, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, you think you have cancer and you find out you don't have cancer. It feels good. So usually you have to be put in a negative state before you can experience the positive state. And so the negative state does have more weight, but that's a whole other subject that I don't think we need to talk about to just get to this point of the ought. The ought is just built out of the math. The, the, the axiom is plus is better than minus, and that to be efficient, you must have more plus than minus. So the ought is just built out of that simple logic of basic mathematics that you, the idea is you've got to land in the green somewhere, not in the red. You've got to be in the black, not the red. Um, you've got to be running a profit, and you can't be running a loss. It's that obvious and ought. Pushing category. Yeah, it's more than the value, the, the category of sentience. It's more than the category of that there be value. You're also including in the definition of this category that everybody who's in it, um, you must uh, have this obligation to, to regard the their personal value. Well, again, you don't have to regard their personal value. I'm just saying that these these gooses lay either the golden egg or the, the let's call it some other, the radioactive egg, the, the egg that will destroy the golden egg. Um, and they lay these eggs, and so their value is in the fact that they're laying the eggs into the field of eggs. And we're trying to, you, just being logical, Okay, by the logical mandate, we want the golden eggs to outnumber the radioactive eggs. We want more gold than radioactive eggs. Um, that's a success. If we don't accomplish that, we've lost the game. So it's like if, as if you're going to use a game metaphor, you can't win the game, okay, if in the end there's more radioactive egg than there is gold egg. Then you've lost the game. Um... And that isn't a logical statement. It, it's a definition of your category. Well, again, it's not my definition of the category. My categories are two things, okay? Good experience, bad experience, and the, those categories are simply have tied to them the simple logic that less bad is good and more good is good, um, or however you want to put that. Again, I, I could say it as less, less bad is good and um, leave it at that, okay? So... Making less bad is a win. Um, and even if you went no further than that, that would be good enough to create this ought. And there's, there's no uh, obligation for me to, to accept that definition. Well, well, I don't know what you mean by obligation. I'm just saying you're, you're, you either understand as a, as a player in the game that the, the, the rational goal is to win the game. You win the game by having less of the toxic stuff and more of the good stuff. Um, you can't win the game as a team, okay, if the end result comes out wrong. And you as an individual player basically are doing the same thing. Your life basically has to turn out where you created more golden eggs, you did more to encourage golden egg production than you did toxic egg production. And if you and your personal interactions with the world did the opposite, then you failed to meet the standard of efficiency just by basic math. So you don't, there's, the obligation is just rational. So it's not an obligation like well, what, what do you want me to say? Some authority says you violated a principle? No, the principle you will violate is basic efficiency. And that efficiency standard only exists if you can do this basic logic. If you want to say feelings don't matter and you want to say pain and suffering aren't fundamental values, well, you know, early in the video you said you wanted to concede those points for the sake of argument. Well, if you're conceding the existence of the minus sign and the plus sign, then I would think you're going to concede the equal sign is meaningful and the end product has to be a plus. In that category um, it is the point. I'm just going to play another clip where you... He just, he just keeps saying these categories are arbitrary. How, you know, they're not arbitrary. They're, they're explicitly defined in, in many videos over and over again that there's, there's a category of feeling, these bad feelings. All right, and those feelings can be less bad. Those experiences. 
It's about categories. The obligation is just built out of no knowledge of that fact. So once you know this is the good thing, it's this comfort thing, and the bad thing, it's the discomfort thing, it doesn't matter whose brain the discomfort's in. Yeah, it doesn't matter uh, to it, but you can uh, not explain... Again, again I, I'm just not going to play this subject-object bullshit game anymore, all right? I'm trying, I'm telling you... The value is indistinct to the individual. It doesn't matter if it matters to somebody. I'm telling you overtly, okay? If the feeling is experienced, it's a reality. It's not a, something for a subject to, to debate whether it happened or not. Well, I'm saying to you, if you're going to accept the axiom, you're going to accept the premises. The premise is, is that when the experience happens, it happens. You can't undo it. You can't erase it. You can't make it go away. It fucking happened, and it doesn't matter about any mattering to who crap. Okay? It doesn't matter even if it doesn't matter to the victim. It doesn't matter. The fact that it happened is a fact. If the victim forgot it happened 10 seconds after it happened, it doesn't matter. It happened. It experienced the suffering. Okay, recognition of the experience is irrelevant to the fact that the experience happened. This mattering uh, about why it matters to me and why I have the obligation by the fact that this sentient animal is suffering. Um, uh, well, once again, if all you have is value tokens, as I've described it, and all you have is plus tokens that are the golden eggs, minus tokens that are the radioactive eggs, um, and you're going to say, well, I'm going to be manipulating these geese with my interaction, and uh, you can't understand what your obligation is, that the, the way to win the game is to have more golden eggs and less radioactive eggs. I'm saying the premise that the bad is bad is already written. You said you accept these premises of a good and a bad. Um, and so it's, it seems automatic. I shouldn't have to explain to you that the objective of the game is to have more good than bad. Uh, I mean, I really shouldn't have to do that, right? Okay. So, probably enough of a video. I mean, I really can't help you. If you can't understand the equal sign and that the product has to be a positive number for you to succeed as a team called human um, or a team called sentient life on earth that your net number has to be a positive number and that that also goes for your individual existence that if you don't create if you don't cause to be created in the world through your interaction more positive gold eggs than negative radioactive eggs then you have done what is defined as failed to meet the standard of efficiency and your life has been a piece of suck. Your life can't be anything else but suck or failure unless you can achieve a positive number for your individual influence. Um, and obviously you would hope the team could win uh, also. But I mean again it's about your behavior that we're talking about in ethics. We can only, we can only individually communicate the idea of trying to win to each player um, individually and um, so we can't do much about what the team is doing except say come on players let's play a good game if they don't want to play a good game you can't I can't nobody can do much about that um, but the bottom line is I still have to account for myself so I still have a score for my own self I have a, a score for my team and I have a score for the overall game and the the objective is to make them all positive to win okay now enough said